I just found a CRKT that I absolutely adore under $50, but it's not what you think. And I also have an inclination on why CRKT knives are so expensive. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we get started on this, let me say something about CRKT. Growing up, CRKT and Kershaw were the knives that I was most familiar with that I could get access to at a reasonable price. They were the $20 to $30 knife. And I have gone through a lot of CRKTs and a lot of Kershaw knives throughout my life. I never really carried one that much, though, because of my, well, my passion for carrying multi-tools. But they were always present. They were always available, and they were always reasonably priced. And it feels like now, with so many good brands showing up and delivering incredible materials, fit and finish, that CRKT is kind of taking its time catching up. If they produce more things like this, though, I think they're going to be... Well, they're going to define themselves a little bit better. And I think they're also kind of doing that. This, however, is not a knife. It's not a knife. It's actually their brand new pen. And I saw this on Zack in the Wild, and I immediately bought two of them, knowing that it would be a fantastic pen that I was absolutely going to end up carrying. So a couple of cool things about this pen. It does have a magnetic cap. So that's kind of a nice little touch. Schmidt inserts. Now it looks like a pretty long pen, looks pretty standard, but that's not what makes this pen so great. What makes it so great is that it has some additional feature. And you know I like gadget pens. I mean, if you've been around, you know I like gadgets, but this is a truly practical tool. And what's in the tail is a carbide scribe. So there's a couple of basic applications where this really comes in. Carpentry, obviously, like making a quick mark on a piece of wood, you know, you can actually see the indentation. You know, it's not going to get removed. It's definitely something you can do very quickly along a, um, a ruler or anything else. So that's good. Now on leather, if you're a leather worker, you can actually you need something like this to kind of mark where you're cutting and where you're putting your stitching. So that's another application. The other thing is just, I've, I've used it for pa opening packages. I've used it for a couple other things. This is, I, I put it back in the box, but I have two of them and I've been using them for a couple days now and they're really convenient. But Zach mentioned something in his interview with Ben Peterson that had my gears turning. And if you look at the way this collar is designed, there's a slit in the middle. This is going to fit an X-Acto blade, meaning that you could have a package opener or whatever else that you need built into your pen. And in some ways, this might be the most convenient total package for these two functions, pen plus craft blade holder. And frankly, I have not seen anything like this before, at least not executed on this level, which I really do like. Now, the other thing that I noticed with this collar, there is potentially a lot of other items that you could put in this hole. The other one that immediately comes to mind is a large piece of lead. So you can buy uh, architect's lead. I'm not exactly cra uh, drafting lead and you can get it in a gauge that would actually work in this color. So you could have a, um, a pencil on one side and a pen on the other with that don't interact with each other. And I think that that also has potential merits. So there's just so many cool things. And because you can remove it, if you do forget and you're walking through TSA, most likely, by the way, uh, they probably won't even notice, but if you need to take this out, you can just throw it away and that kind of thing. So needless to say, this is absolute home run from CRKT. Love this design, love the execution on this pen. Um, just a lot of little, just a good combination of things here. I don't even mind the CRKT on the side. Pretty neat. Enough, enough said, this is just a fantastic pen. And I highly, highly recommend it as something that potentially does multiple things simultaneously. And if you're not one to carry a, a knife every day or you work in a job where maybe that's not ideal, but occasionally you have to open packages and do other things, this could be a great combination. You have your pen and you have your utility knife at the same time. Or, like I said, if you work in a field that might need a scribe, and this would also mark on softened steel as well, Absolutely. Machinists and everyone else, I can definitely see this being of value. So really, really nice work. Okay, so that pen is fantastic. 
I don't know why I'm putting it back in the box. But can we talk for a second about CRKT? Uh, this is what came with those two pens in this beautiful magazine. This is one of the most high-end curated magazines on knives I have ever seen. In fact, I'm pretty sure the uh, brochure, the, the, uh, the paraphernalia you get when you buy an expensive car is not as nice as this magazine is. I was just flicking through it and like just the graphics and the quality of the images and the, the interviews and the different people involved. Clearly, they are spending a lot of money getting this many people involved. I think they're moving towards more of a legacy style brand. They're trying to market themselves a little differently. But I worry that so much money is being spent in this era when, like this area, I should say, when so many people are digesting knife content primarily through YouTube and online, right? And so, I don't know. I don't know about this. I, I think that I think that they probably would have done a lot better had they focused more on um, just producing knives at a reasonable price. You're starting to see Kershaw kick things into gear. You're starting to see, like, I, I think a friend of mine said that the new uh, crossbar D2 folder that they had was one of the best that they'd ever used. I mean, it's around 50 to 60 bucks, which is still a little bit on the pricey side, but it does have aluminum handles. We're starting to see them catch up. I would like to see CRKT do exactly the same thing. They have some unbelievable designers on their teams. Unbelievable. But you've got to stop selling D2 folders at $70 when you can buy a decent D2 knife at $40, $30, like half the cost and potentially with better materials. So I would love to see more CRKT on the table like this pen, which I find to be absolutely phenomenal. That's pretty much it for today. Uh, I don't know when the next time you'll see a CRKT on the table. It's going to have to be something special. I bought this myself. And they have not sent me anything, but I love this product. I really, really do. Uh, this is one of the best things that's come out of CRKT in a long time. I've looked at through it, the rest of their catalog. They have some very interesting knives. I just don't think they have the value attraction that I tend to be focused on, right? So I don't, I usually buy things when they seem really good for the price. And maybe that's unfair to CRKT, but it's just kind of the way I am. I, I can't help it. But anyway, definitely check out this pen. You are definitely going to want to get one if you are in the kind of... Um, job that a carbide scribe or a craft blade would come in handy i absolutely think that this is the way to go as always guys thank you for your time and i'll talk again soon